Natasha. And welcome back to our studio series. It's been a while, hasn't it? Something of a hiatus, yes. A sabbatical. An extended interlude. But we're back and we're here to talk about... Grey. Well, that doesn't sound very interesting. But there's probably a lot more to plain old grey than you might think, so... Stick around to find out. So grey, that's just a mixture of black and white, isn't it? Can be. And the grey that you'll produce will be largely dependent on the black that you're using. In this case, we're using an ivory black mixed with a titanium white, and that gets you a blue-gray. Which, which is fine, but it's a kind of a one-trick pony, really. And by the way, one of the challenges we face with doing videos about gray is often we're talking about very subtle color variations, and they can be hard to pick up on the device depending on what you're watching this video on. Even in real life, grays can be very affected by the lighting conditions. Very true, yes indeed. But back to our black and white scenario. So that's a very simplistic approach and it won't always get you the color you're looking for. So what options do we have? A better way to think about it is a gray is just a muted version of a color. So a muted blue or a muted green, for example. And, and those would be the cool grays. If you wanted to think of a warm gray, think of a muted orange or a muted red. A muted red, that might be hard to picture. But if you remember our color wheel, think about the colors that are close to the center of the color wheel. Close to the center, not bang on the center, because then you're back to the black and white scenario. The colors we're talking about hover around that bullseye. To demonstrate this, we're gonna start with black. Now, not a black out of a tube, but rather a mixture of blue, red, and yellow. In this case, a mixture of phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, and lemon yellow. Now, for all intents and purposes, this will look like black. Um, but slowly, we just uh, start adding a little bit of white. First, we weight the mixture towards the blue. This, of course, gets us a blue-gray. Then we're going to repeat that process. This time, however, we're going to weight the mixture a little more on the red side to get a warmer gray. And finally, coming out on the yellow side, this is gonna give us a greenish gray. That's definitely more interesting than using simple black and white. Um, and you get some very rich, um, beautiful muted colors. Um, and any one of them, if you saw them in isolation, you would describe them as gray. Um, but how can we use this in practice? Well, you can be more deliberate about how you use your, your grays in a painting. What are your grays doing for you? Yeah, so for example, let's say that the main highlights in your painting are oranges and golds then maybe selecting a bluish gray might work very nicely for you. And that goes back to our video on complementaries because the same works in reverse. If you have strong blues in your painting, you may want to consider a warmish gray to enliven those blues. Yeah, now don't think of this as a hard and fast rule. It's not like you have to use the complementary every time. For example, if you're trying to depict a shadow, then maybe a muted version of the same color might work very well. The main thing is to have a clear idea about what you want your gray to do for you and to mix your grays accordingly. Yeah, and in most cases, that's going to mean staying away from that dead neutral graveyard gray and instead introduce a little bit of bias into that color. Let your grays be biased. Let them lean a little bit towards a color on the color wheel. In fact, I used to tell my students that they weren't allowed to use the word gray at all. They had to describe everything they saw in terms of being a muted red, a muted yellow, a muted orange, whatever it was. No matter how much of a stretch of the imagination it took, I just felt it yielded better results. Well, that wraps it up, I guess, for this gray winter's day in Mississauga. Or muted blue winter's day. I actually see more of a muted green. Where? I, over there? I, no, I see it. Well, muted it's a little gray. purple down there, and then that's actually like, well, I'd green okay, up there, I'm telling I'm you. Sure. I don't know what you're seeing.